Hey, it's Joe. I'm going to be setting up a Trimble RTK base station. Uh, this is going to be the same process as setting up uh, a fast static base station, except for we won't have a radio on a fast static, right? Uh, so we'll go through the actual hardware and then the software so that this can get up and running and actually broadcasting its position to the RTK rovers. Okay, let's get into it. I have my tripod here. I have my gear to the left of me, uh, along with the radio. Everything I need is to set up a base. So I can do this uh, for either RTK base station or I can do this for fast static. This is the same way you'd set up the three fast static stations. So right here, I have a known high order point that I'm gonna set up over. I'm gonna get plumb, set everything up, and then I'll go through the actual software of how to establish uh, and start broadcasting from the base. So first thing, I got my tripod here. <clears throat> I'm not really setting up an optical instrument on it, so I just need to make sure that it's probably a little higher than usual because it is a GPS system. I just make sure all the legs are the same height. Maybe about eye level. I'll set it over the point. I'll get out my plumb bob. Even though this system does have an optical plumb, the plumb bob is going to get you a lot closer in the beginning. Make this process a little faster for you. Notice I'm not taking the cover off of the tripod uh, before I in place the plumb bob because the cover is actually going to hold the plumb bob in the center. Okay, This is going to give me about an inch of play either direction as far as my plumb line. All right, so I get it as plumb as I can using the plumb bob. Then about an inch. Then I take a step back. I verify my rough plumb. So I'm looking at the top of the actual plumb bob, making sure it's roughly level uh, using my eyes. And it's looking all right. I'll check the other direction. It's looking good. So now I'm going to actually step on the boots and make sure this is firmly seated into the ground. Okay, so I'll just go around. Now notice as I step on each leg, the plumb bob is going to go towards that leg. So I need to put them all on the ground about equal distance as well. So that's one leg. Two legs. And three. So good, I'm still about an inch within that tolerance. So now I'll take the plumb bob, properly stow it. And I'll take off tripod covering. Make sure it's clean, wipe it off, and then grab the tri-brock. <clears throat> tri-brock goes on. Right here, that's my actual optical plumb, so that's what I'm going to be using to get my fine plumb. All right, I'll get it on finger tight a little loose so I can still move it, I can still manipulate it. Then when I actually look through, before I actually start looking through the optical plumb, I need to make sure that this base is, uh, the tri-brock is actually level. So I'm gonna be looking at this circular level on top. So I get that level, using my two and one method. It's level, now I can actually look through. It needs to move. So I'll move it, re-verify my level. It's good, I'm directly on the point. I wanna be as accurate as possible in this part. So I'm perfectly plumb via line of sight. The tri is level. So now I'm gonna take the GPS antenna and the antenna adapter along with the antenna cable. The antenna adapter goes on like so, but before I put that on, I'm gonna connect the actual antenna cable because it'll make everything a little easier. So I'll set this up top. Yep, 
You know, there's two ends of this cable. They're both the same threading. They'll work either direction. But for this part, you want to use the right angle one on the actual antenna. All right, once that's on nice and snug, I'll take the antenna adapter, thread it on nice and easy. Then it simply goes into the tri brock and I'll lock it down with the switch in the back. So now that's in place. So now I'm gonna grab my quick releases that are actually gonna mount the M7 and the TSE3 to the tripod so it'll all be in one place when we uh, get the broadcasting. All right, so here are the quick releases. They both have buttons. I'm gonna make sure the buttons are facing upwards and away from the tripod so I can actually uh, manipulate any gear that I mount on here. It'll be right, right side up. So this one, will be for the M7. The M7 will go there. And this one will be for the TSC-3. Got a long thread. All right. Once those are in place, I'll grab the TSC-3, the TSC-3 mount, and the TSC-3 cable. So here's the cable. This is my TSC-3 to M7 cable along with the mount that's actually going to go around the TSE 3 and mount it on the tripod. Okay. So for this mount, I want it to go on like so with the nipple, the metal nipple facing to the left as you're looking at the screen. I'll go on like so. I make sure I have a battery in. I'll make sure it turns on. And then I'll connect my TSE 3 to M7 cable. Jesus. That's in place. Now the last part is going to be actually mounting the M7, connecting the radio, and then getting into the software. So I'll grab the M7. On the back of it, it has a nipple just like the TSE 3 does, and that's what's going to go into this quick release. It's going to actually mount it on the tripod. Make sure it clicks so I can pull on it. I had to press that button while I push it in so I can pull on it and it's not going to go anywhere. Same thing with the TSE 3. Everything's nice and firm on there. So one thing I didn't check before I put it in, you actually want to make sure you, you do have batteries in here, both A and B. You open up both of them. All right, we're good. Now I'm going to grab the radio and the radio to M7 cable. The radio can just kind of hang on here somewhere, one of the tripod legs. Once we start broadcasting, we should probably put that up in a higher place somewhere that the radio is going to have a better line of sight to the rovers. And if you're doing uh, fast static, uh, it's the same process except for you do not need a radio. No radios are needed for fast static, it's only RTK. So, I have my antenna, TSE 3, radio. They all link into this M7 here. Uh, it's kind of like a, a router. It makes everything talk to each other. And it's all labeled. So I have a GPS. That's going to be what the antenna plugs into. Just threads on like so. I have a radio external power. So that's what my radio is actually going to get hooked up to. And I'm looking on these cables, there's a red dot. And on the M7, there's a red line. I need to line those up. So never force this. It should click into place uh, fairly easily. So 
So I slide it in, clicks, and I can pull on it and it's not going to go anywhere. Then the last one is going to be the TSE3. So the controller handheld port is what we're going to plug the TSE3 into. Got my red dot, my red line. And there, now everything's connected. I just have to make my radio port. There we go. Now everything's connected. Okay. So now I make sure that I close my case. If I'm not using it. And now all I have to do is actually measure the height of the antenna and then go into the software. Okay, so now that everything is connected and firmly in place, uh, since we added a lot more weight to the tripod in different areas, you want to verify that the instrument is still plumb and level. So that's kind of a constant process before you uh, press measure or before you start broadcasting the uh, base receiver, you always want to check that. So. Everything's turned on, and I need the actual height of this instrument now. So for the RTK rovers, they have a set height because they're on a fixed range pole. For this, is going to be a different height every time because tripods are set up by different individuals are going to be different heights. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the actual notch on the tripod. I'm going to measure from exactly my fine plumb point of aim to this notch here. I'm going to be doing it in... Uh, uh, meters. It's going to be metric. Alright, so there's a couple ways to do this. You can bring it down right where you want it. Step on it. It can be a little tricky sometimes. You step on it. You bring it up. You get that notch to be directly in line with this tape. And I'll read it. So I have a 1.48 one that's what my reading says okay so you can do it that way or you can take it hook it like so and some people run it down like that and so you'll be reading down there okay either way and then i can take that uh write it down somewhere and then we'll actually get into the software so now i'm going to need the trig data for this point that we're over meaning the position data and elevation along with that height of the instrument and we can start broadcasting so the RTK uh, rovers can pick it up. Okay, so looking at the TSC3 screen, I'm still out here. I'm just recording the screen, right? So uh, there might be some background noise. Just bear with me here. So I've already went over how to set up an RTK style, uh, a template, and a job. So we're going to go into general survey. may take a second to load all right and over here on the right we can see it's uh, attempting to connect so everything's booting up right now and here we go so we have some satellites an antenna and it's in uh, PPS mode so it says not keyed load keys are switched to SPS mode so I'm not gonna put keys into it uh, if you're in an operational environment, obviously you should. I'm not going to, so that only gives me one option. Load keys or switch to SPS mode. So we see down here, SPS. You select that. Switch to SPS, yes. Alright, and it's going to take a moment. It's going to actually connect to the antenna. And there it is. It's in SPS mode, so the problem solved. And if that's something that's happening with your receiver, either load keys or switch. That's your only two options. So I'll press escape. And now I'm going to go into jobs, and I'll make a new job. And I'm going to name it something like uh, like the date base. Right, and the template is going to be the template that we built. 
to be Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Then I'll press accept. All right, so this is good. We see we're actually tracking satellites over here. Our batteries will do just fine. And we're going to go into measure. And we're going to start the base receiver. So start base. And what it's asking for here is where the base is. So we actually got plumb over uh, PE number one, right? It's a high order, uh, high accuracy point that we're established. Uh, so if we hit this drop down and go into list, there's no items available yet. So what we need to do is hit that drop down again and key in uh, PE1's point data. So obviously name PE space one. I'll input the easting. The northing. And the elevation. All right, then I ask for code. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, that's just a way to actually annotate what kind of point it is. So once we have that in, we'll press enter. So keep in mind, I actually got this off of an uh, an actual trig list, right? I'm not just pulling this off of the GPS receiver data. Like whatever its current position is is not what I'm going to use. I'm going to actually input from trig data. So once it's in, I'll press enter and store. And there it is. Our point is over PE1, the antenna height. So that's the actual height that we measured the antenna at um, to that notch. So it's 1.841 meters. All right. And then we measured two, top of notch. Uh, oh my. Goofy. Silly me. 1.481 meters is what it was top of notch and then station index okay so press enter and start the base has started and that's it so now uh, we see the antenna height is displayed over here number of satellites being tracked and all you have to do as the base operator is make sure that the radio stays uh, powered on okay Powered on along with the batteries for the M7 and the TSC3. And that's it as far as setting up a Trimble GPSS or GNSS base station for RTK Ops. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, feel like you could add to something, uh, please let me know or reach out to me any way you can, either YouTube or Facebook. Either one works. Again, this is Joseph Yo. Uh, have a good one.